whether you're engaging on people's content or doing that two-step referral or introduction method, it's a great way to actually start conversations with your prospects or with your buyers on LinkedIn. Um, some people call, you know, suspect prospect lead, in which case a suspect's just like, anyone out there who might respond on a content a prospect is is someone who responds on your content um who's also a, a you know your buyer persona and then a lead is when they have a conversation with you so that's one way of thinking of it we have six phases actually to be to, to successful selling the first is the mindset we, we talked about the second is the branding which we talked about the third is the um engagement before connecting number four the fifth is making sure you're sharing content all the time to stay in top uh, top of mind with your buyer. And then number six, wait, I can, number six is, is the cadence. And that's next on Bootstrapping Your Dream Show. So the big question is this, how are ambitious people like us who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. Hey listeners and viewers, we have created a tremendous community of bootstrappers, entrepreneurs, and professionals who are ambitious, resourceful, and want to get things done. We brainstorm, support, and help each other out. Come join us, navigate to bootstrapping. If you like this video, do not forget to hit that like button now. Or if you want us to improve our content, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button and give us your feedback in the comment section below. Here at Tetra Noodle, we are passionate about entrepreneurship, technology, and innovation. Every week, we bring you insightful and engaging interviews, tips, tricks, and strategies to help you grow your business or rise in your corporate profession. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And do not forget to hit that bell icon so that you are notified when we publish. Hello and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dream Show. I'm your host Manoj Agarwal and today we'll be talking with Viveka Von Rosen. So Viveka is the co-founder and chief visibility officer <laughs> of Vingresso, known internationally as the LinkedIn expert. She's the author of the best-selling LinkedIn marketing an hour a day and LinkedIn 101 ways to rock your personal brand as a contributing expert to LinkedIn's official sales and marketing blogs and their sophisticated marketeers guides. She is often called on to contribute to publications like Fast Company, Forbes, Money, Entrepreneur, The Social Media Examiner, and so on. Vivica takes a LinkedIn experience she has perfected over the past 10 years. Did it exist 10 years ago? And Actually 14. <laughs> <laughs> I need to update that bio. <laughs> and transforms it into engaging and informational training, having provided uh, over, um, having trained over 100,000 people with the tools and strategies they need to succeed on LinkedIn. Welcome, Vivika. This has been uh, such an amazing, like intriguing, intriguing uh, introduction. So I'd love to learn more <laughs> about LinkedIn. Um, just so you know, a disclaimer, I've been away from social media. I <laughs> shut it out for 10 years and now I'm trying to get in there. So I'm a complete novice. Uh, but anyway, welcome. Um, I'd love to know more. Uh, but uh, before we get into that, uh, how about we get to know you first? Sure. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about how you got started on LinkedIn, your backstory. Sure, sure. And by the way, your LinkedIn profile is very good. So Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, you might not have been on social for a while, but LinkedIn looks like you have been. Mm -hmm. um, so about 14, 15, 16 years ago, I was running a co-share space um, company and um, I loved the marketing aspect of it. I loved working with our entrepreneurs, our solopreneurs, our small business owners, didn't like so much managing the company, but, um, but I did love the marketing piece. And so I would always bring in speakers to talk about like what was cool um, 
what was cool in the marketing world. And we had these networking events that we would do. And so I brought a woman in to talk about Web 2.0. Mm -hmm. So that tells you how long ago it was, the fact that <laughs> the whole idea that the web was interactive. In fact, I, I did an interview earlier today and I realized that was, I think, before the first iPhone. So it oh, was... Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I had a trio back then, um, but you know, you, it's not like you could browse the web on your phone, yeah. you know, <laughs> 16 years ago. So there was a, uh, there was something text-based uh, browsing W W A P or something like that. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but um, it just shows you how, how things have progressed. So mm -hmm. at the very end of her presentation, she mentioned this thing called LinkedIn and because I'd been able to double the business in a year doing face-to-face -face networking, I thought, oh, there's like 7 million users. Wow, that's huge. That such a big number. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's not anymore. There's over 650 million users on LinkedIn alone and never mind, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. But back then that was a huge, huge number. And so um, I was really excited about it and I learned everything I could about it. My friend Jason Alba had written a book, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, Now What? And I just absorbed everything I could about this thing called LinkedIn. And um, one of our local, uh, well, actually it was an international association, but they reached out to me and said, hey, do you wanna come speak on, on LinkedIn at our annual conference in New York City in the Waldorf Astoria Ballroom. So that was my first official paid speaking gig. Wow. Um, and I was like, yeah, sure. And it's just kind of snowballed since then. Nice. Awesome. Well, I mean, um, yeah, full disclosure, like I have had uh, my LinkedIn profile since uh, 2005 or 2006 or something like yeah. that. But I yeah. never, you know, did anything with it. I, I never understood what the heck is all about. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, it's been fascinating sort of discovering it or re rediscovering it. Um, so let's uh, get down into it because I think we have lots to cover. Um, can you sh just sort of demystify LinkedIn for people um, and tell us like, you know, what is the power? How do we harness it? What are the results we can expect from LinkedIn? Yeah, sure. And so for people like you who've been on it, you know, almost since the beginning, mm -hmm. back then it was much more a recruiting tool than it was, well, there were no social networks back then, right? It was before Facebook, it was before Twitter, there was MySpace. So, um, so a lot of people, especially early adopters, tend to think of it still as a recruiting tool. And obviously it is so much more than that now. Mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn has an entrepreneur, small business owner, it is a marketing platform. It is a sales platform. And the cool thing is you can do a lot with the free version of LinkedIn. There's some really cool aspects to Sales Navigator and to Recruiter, but um, for, for the free for the free program itself, or for it, it, it's it's extremely powerful. So, to that point, what are some things you can do? And you, honestly, your your profile is excellent. So let's talk first about personal branding. Sure. You can create a strong personal brand. Now you can create company pages too, and if we have time, we'll talk about those. But when it comes to creating your own brand online, LinkedIn is so much more than just a resume, right? We like to say it becomes a resource for yeah. your buyers. And think about it, when you Google something, or especially when you Google someone, mm -hmm. what's you know the first, second, or third thing that shows up is usually a LinkedIn profile. So people are gonna click on that, they're gonna go to your LinkedIn profile, and it's either gonna turn them off and you're gonna lose the business. Mm -hmm. It doesn't leave much of an impact at all. It looks more like a resume and they're kinda like, meh. Or it looks like your profile and it really, it's like, oh, wow, this is cool. Like, let me read more. Let me see what else he does. Let me see how he can help me. So that's what we want. We want you to create, or we want our entrepreneurs and our small business owners to create buyer centric, right? So it's mm -hmm. focused on what the buyer's needs are, what the buyer's points of pain are. Mm -hmm. So not a resume. Who cares if you're a quote crushing sales guy? We don't care. We care about how can you help me and so your, your profile becomes a buyer-centric resource, almost a tasteful <laughs> uh, sales page that they can read and then learn more about you and more, learn more about what you do and how you can help them. And, yeah. you know, that's, that's the first, that's the mindset, right? To approach LinkedIn. This is my opportunity to create 
a brand, to position myself as an expert, to position myself as my buyer's advocate or my customer's advocate. And, you know, not everyone is obviously in sales, although if you're an entrepreneur, you kind of are, you kind of do everything, especially our solopreneurs out there. Mm -hmm. But it's your opportunity really to position yourself as their go-to back before the internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, back before, you know, all this marketing, when sellers, whoever, you know, seller, small business owner, whatever, would talk to their customers or their clients, they were a resource. You know, the customer and client would come to the seller and ask them questions and the seller would be a resource. And then came the internet and then came the spam and mm-hmm. then came the onslaught of information. Well, now modern buyers They've moved away from, you know, trusting their seller because there's so many spammers out there. There's so much crap out there. (laughs) And so they're doing their own research. And and if you create a LinkedIn profile, and we'll talk about content in just a bit, but if you create a LinkedIn profile Mm -hmm. that supports their research, that serves them what they're looking for as far as information about your product again, how you can help them, et cetera, they're much more likely to consider you like an old school advocate and resource as opposed to a pushy, annoying salesperson. Mm -hmm. So that mindset is like step number one. Mm -hmm. Um, Step number two, you want to be branded to your your company. So if Mm -hmm. you've already got a website, then you want to make sure that your background image is branded to what the website is. If you've got employees, create a couple background images that are branded to your website, you know, same, same font, same color scheme, same images, et cetera, and, and ask your employees to, to upload those, ima- those background images too. Um, the first thing that people look at when they go to your profile is your picture. Mm-hmm. And that's on a heat map, you know, that's where I, people's eyes go first. And yet two things happen. A lot of people, um, because it's the default setting, have their their settings set up that only their connections can see their picture. Mm-hmm. So think about it. You're reaching out to someone to engage with them for the first time, or they're going to your profile to check you out. And there's that like, you know, that little icon of a head and yeah. not actually your face. Yeah. So you want to make sure you upload a good and like you, again, yours smiling, close up. You look like your picture. I think you're wearing the same shirt. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> But I would recognize you, right? I would recognize you from your image, whereas a lot of times you'll get people who, you know, think they look better 20 years ago. So they have a picture like if you had a full head of hair, uh, I might not recognize you. I was just going to say, that's my secret. I just shave it off, uh, you know, so that my my picture stays fresh, but I shave uh, off my head to stay up to date. (laughs) <laughs> See? But I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a conference or, you know, a, a, an event, a trade show, and I meet with someone and I've looked them up on LinkedIn. So I think I know who I'm looking for. And then they introduce themselves to me and like the look on my face must be like, uh, oh, oh hi, because yeah, yeah. they don't look at all mm-hmm. like their picture yeah. um or they they have the settings wrong so you can't even see their picture maybe so, maybe they just copied over the tinder settings right yeah exactly <laughs> well they, it is it's like tinder for business right yeah. <laughs> You're gonna swipe left or swipe right swipe right on the invitation to connect that's yeah. exactly right mm-hmm. um and like tinder you need to tell the truth about yourself because they're gonna find out at some point anyway mm-hmm. uh, i never got that i don't get why people lie on tinder or match.com because like when you meet face to face the yeah, truth yeah. will out <laughs> that extra 100 pounds is gonna show up i'm just <laughs> saying <laughs> yeah that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, so after that, um, you know, the heat map, it goes first to your face, then it goes to the background image, then it goes to the headline. And a lot of people go with the default, which is title at company. But like, if I were to do that, right, I'm CVO of Vengresso. Mm-hmm. First of all, no one knows what a CVO is. It's, it's essentially made up a title because all the good ones were taken at our company. Right. So I'm chief, visi- <laughs> chief visibility officer, mm-hmm. which still people are like, I don't, I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. And a Vengresso, like, is that soup? Is it a, is it a, a sports car? Like, what is this? Veng- is, it, it is, is it a sports drink? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So rather than that, I actually explain, you know, what we do and who we help and mm-hmm. how we help them and then some other stuff too. And you did the exact same thing on your profile. You help entrepreneurs 
So who do you help? Entrepreneurs, what do you help them to do? Maximize their ROI, build purposeful startups and businesses, and turn their vision into a reality. Bam! That's what you want because every time you engage with someone, they're going to see your picture, your name, and at least the first part of that headline. Mm -hmm. So CBO of Ingresso means nothing, but we help, you know, small to medium size, B2B, create conversations with their connections on LinkedIn, keynote speaker, blah, blah, blah. Now people know who I am and have a better idea of who I am. And then the about section, which again, people just forget about, um, you've got 20, it's actually 2,600. It's, it, it used to be 2,000 characters, but now you have 2,600 characters to really expand upon what you do and how you help people remaining buyer centric. This isn't mm -hmm. about you. It's about your client or your prospect and how you can help your prospect. And again, you've done a great job of that. And you've done things like add the emojis, add the special bullets, things that attract the human eye. And you have used all of that space, which you're supposed to. And you've even put your, your call to action, well, several calls to action, and you've put your calendar link in there and you've put your phone number in there. So if a prospect comes across your profile, they're going to be like, oh yeah, this is awesome. I want to learn more about this. And instead of going and trying to search all over and send a connection request and then go over to your website and try and find that email address, it's right there. Not only that, but they can book a time with you right there in your profile. So that's what, you know, your, your, your profile actually perfectly reflects what a good buyer centric profile looks like. And then finally you add media on there for them. You add actual content that they can look at, download, absorb. So again, yeah. making your profile a resource, not just a resume. So yeah. as far as profiles, you know, go look at Manu. Now I'm going to mispronounce your name, and I. Oh no, that's <laughs> fine. Go, that's fine. Yeah, look at your profile exactly to see what a good one looks like, and you you got that. Well, thanks. I just want to clarify here. I don't want to give anybody any uh, any uh, reason to you know doubt themselves. So this is like the fifteenth or twentieth version <laughs> of my profile. So you know, it takes time to figure it out. Like you know, you make small changes. So. Guys, if, if, if you're at the beginning of the journey, then don't despair, you know, just implement these things uh, slowly and uh, it'll be all fine. And, and, and as a resource, if you go to Vengresso ebook.com, V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O ebook.com, um, we've actually got the formula. You can just download it for free. So then you don't have <laughs> to be like Manoj and, and do it 15 times. We've actually got the formula for awesome. you. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, okay, this is great. So our profile is set up now. What is the next step? Because I know there are other moving pieces that we need to take care of, right? Well, exactly. So hopefully your, your profile is so awesome that all these leads come pouring in. You don't have to do anything else. But even my profile doesn't do that. So you still have to reach out and engage and connect and feed your network. So the first thing, and this is where a lot of, LinkedIn trainers get it wrong. They teach people how to connect before they teach them how to engage. But you really want to build your relationships before sending out the invitation to connect. So it's just like going to a networking event. You're not going to walk into a net, I hope, walk into a networking event with your, you know, your business card in front of you going, buy my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, that's what it feels like people are doing on LinkedIn, right? You get all these invitations to connect. You don't know the person for some reason you accept the invitation and the next thing you know, you get a sales pitch. Yeah, it's yeah. like, Ugh. or, you know, they pay for in mails and just pitch you, pitch you, pitch you, but you don't know who this person is and why in the world would you trust yourself, your business, your finances, etc., to this complete stranger on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. the way to turn that on its head and what we teach is engage with people first where they're active. So you go to LinkedIn, you go to their profile. Now, if they're sharing content, like you're, you're great at sharing content, I click in to see their activity. I can look at your posts. I can look at your articles. I have a wealth of information for when I reach out to you the first time. In fact, I can even just go into your activity, look at a recent post and comment on that post. And a week later, maybe comment on a different post that you've shared because you're active on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. And that will, you know, as I said, you'll see my face, yeah. you'll see my name, 
you'll see my headline and you'll, you'll see the positive, because I'm usually positive, you'll see my positive engagement with your post, mm -hmm. which will be, build positive sentiment. And you may not remember exactly who I am and what posts and where you know me from, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you when I reach out to you and, and invite you to connect, you're a lot more likely to do it. So the first thing you want to do is find your prospects on LinkedIn. Um, and we can talk about that and some, some ninja tricks around that, but find your prospects on LinkedIn for those who are actually already active, start engaging on their content. Don't be like a stalker. I mean, not, not every single day, cause that's just creepy, but <laughs> if you do it like once or twice or three or four times a month, like once a week, say, um, it will build that, that, sense of familiarity and then you invite them to connect so that's one thing that you can do now if you find a great prospect but they're not active on linkedin which let's face it that's probably 90 percent of linkedin mm -hmm. you can still see who you have in common yeah. and when you see your shared connections you can ask mm -hmm. any one of those people to in, to introduce you to your prospect yeah. and we do what's called a two-step referral method we'll we'll find five or six people you know, ask the first one, are you willing to introduce me to, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk? Um, sure. Great. I'll write the, I'll actually write the introduction for you, save you some time. Um, feel free to, to customize it as you want. Um, and just ask if you, when you send it, can you please CC me? Mm -hmm. And so great. Now I know <laughs> that you've actually sent the introduction and because I'm CC'd on it, whether you know gary responds to you or not i can now respond to him like thanks so much manoush hey gary how you doing bro mm -hmm. and that gives me an opportunity to start that conversation we have a guy named mike the mm -hmm. only um he's a client the only thing he does is introductions that's how he connects with everyone on linkedin he has a hundred percent um uh appointment setting rate wow. Nice. Now, not every single person he reaches out to will do the introduction. Yeah, so if yeah. the first person doesn't do it, then he goes to the second person. If the second person doesn't do it, he goes to the third person. Nice. But usually by the time he gets the fourth, the fifth, the sixth person, they're actually willing to introduce him. So he gets the introduction. Yeah. And because he's CC'd on it, he's, he could just, he just starts that conversation off. Yeah, so amazing. that can really help you. And that's, that's before the connection, right? So whether you're engaging on people's content or doing that two-step referral or introduction method, it's a great way to actually start conversations mm -hmm. with your prospects or with your buyers on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And great. then the third step is, after connecting with them, of course, yeah. is share content. Mm -hmm. And that gives them an opportunity to engage on your content. It keeps you top of mind with them without being annoying. Mm -hmm. um, your, your content's gonna be more likely to be seen on their timeline than even them opening up an email that you send them directly. Yeah, yeah. And of course, if you are directly connected with them, when something does come up that you think they'd be interested in, you can send them that private message. Oh. So that's, that's kind of step number three. That's great. That's great. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, so this was, uh, you know, very good foundation. Um, and uh, along the journey, I sort of, you know, I, it took me a while stumbling, trying yeah. to figure out, you know, and got, I got to this point, right? And this is what happened with me. And, and uh, probably it happened with a lot of people. That's why I'm going to ask the question. I'm not a salesperson, right? right. So I, I'm, I'm good at having conversations. So what used to happen was I used to have this deep, meaningful conversations, yeah. lengthy conversations, which never went anywhere. You know, we just, yeah. used to, oh, okay. Uh, how's the weather, how are your kids, family, business, blah, 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 you know, and then nothing happened. And I was like, okay, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was trying to make a sale, but I don't know how to like, you know, steer the conversation into that, that um, uh, sales part. So yeah. have you experienced that with others? Like, and, and how do you tackle that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so we have an ebook for that too, called the okay. PBS Playbook. Uh, yeah, no, these these are all common common um, issues. So, the, well, the big problem not not people like you, but a lot of people on LinkedIn, they're they're using automation tools. Mm -hmm. That ruins it for the rest of us. So, mm -hmm. whenever you reach out to someone, and I know you're already doing this, you personalize the invitation or you personalize the the message. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you add value. So you don't try and sell them right away. 
you share an ebook, a checklist, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, a link to a blog article they might find interesting. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but you, you always want to add value and then you put in that call to action. Now you don't have to wait and nurture those relationships for months and months and years and years, mm -hmm. like one or two helpful, useful po or uh, messages. And it's okay to ask for that Zoom call or to ask for that phone call. And I think that's where a lot of people, they're, they're kind of hoping like, if I send out enough stuff, mm -hmm. then they'll like read it and call me back. Mm -hmm. um, but no. <laughs> so there's a couple things to, to, you know, to, to be aware of. Um, first of all, even if you're not a salesperson, you have to be a salesperson, yeah. but you be a salesperson by positioning yourself as an advocate and not like someone annoying and pesky. Having said that, you need to make the initiative to reach out and invite them to connect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not a short sales, sometimes it's a short sales cycle. Sometimes, you know, you send something and they write back and boom, you've got a sale. Yay. Um, sometimes it takes months, if not years, but again, you continue to feed them with content via, you know, via the timeline, sharing updates, whatever. We had a, we had a client we just picked up um, and he actually said this, he wrote to, to Mario, who's our CEO and said, you know, I've been, you connected with me, I think it was 18 months ago. I never responded, but I've been watching your content for the past 18 months and I'm finally ready to buy. Mm. So had we just like connected and then been like, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to come to me. Um, nothing would have happened. But the fact that, that Mario had been sharing that content for a long time mm -hmm. um, and, and finally the guy was ready to buy and there was Mario's content to remind him he was ready to buy, that, that really helped. Yeah. And another thing to do is what's called the social surround. Now, this works better if there's more than one person on your team, right? So if you've got a couple salespeople or, or whatever, if it's just you, it's just engaging on their content. Mm -hmm. But if you've got um, a team of people, even if it's just two or three folks, and we have everyone on Vengresso, when we've got a prospect that we want to socially surround, um, which simply means they share a post and we all comment on it, right? Or they mm -hmm. comment on somebody else's post and we all comment on their comment. Mm -hmm. You can actually grab that link and then share it through an email or whatever. And then what we tell our team is like, go comment on this. And what happens is this guy or this gal, you know, is just commented on a post, but all of a sudden all these notifications are coming in that the CIM of Vengresso, you know, commented on their post and the CEO of Vengresso commented on the post and the CVO of Vengresso commented on the post and a profile writer at Vengresso posted on their post. And some people might find that annoying, but most people are intrigued by that. Like, wow, look at this company and they're all engaged on my post. And we actually closed a huge deal. Um, and it was a woman, it was funny, it was a woman, I'm not gonna name the company, but it was a woman who we had been trying to get uh, access to for years. Mm -hmm. And she was just ignoring all the emails and all the invitations. All of us had invited her to connect and ignoring all the invitations, all the emails, all the phone calls. But we were keeping an eye on her and she posted on this other person's. And then we did the social surround Mm -hmm. And then Maria reached out to her and um, she accepted the invitation uh, and his invitation and a uh, phone call and, um, and now they're clients. So it's interesting how, how little things like that, just a slight tweak to what you're already doing can, can have an effect. Yeah, that's so true. Um, and a couple of other light bulb uh, moments for me were one is um, Again, you know, I'm I'm coming. I'm I'm saying this as a novice to marketing and sales because my background is tech, right? Yeah. Um, every time somebody mentioned leads, I used to think exactly what you said, meaning lead will be an inbound lead where right. they'll, they'll raise their hand and they'll say, you know what, I I have a I have a check for you right now. I have my credit card <laughs> in hand. Uh, where do I pay? And that's what I had in mind when I used to think about leads. Right. Uh, so. Can you clarify in your own words, what does a lead mean and what does it mean to be uh, lead gen, doing lead gen? Yeah. And there's, there's different, there's like, um, some people call, you know, suspect prospect lead, in which case a suspect's just like 
anyone out there who might respond on a content. A prospect is, is someone who responds on your content, um, who's also a, a, you know, your buyer persona, and then a lead is when they have a conversation with you. So that's one way of thinking of it. Mm -hmm. um, another way of thinking of it is uh, MQLs and SQLs, right? So you've got your marketing qualified leads, which are those inbound leads, those people who come to your, your LinkedIn or your website, and they might download an ebook, but they're, you know, they're marketing qualified. They found you. Um, and so if you've got a product to sell them, they know who you are. So you, you've crossed that KLT barrier, that no like, and trust barrier, yeah, yeah. but maybe they can't afford you. <laughs> maybe they're not actually ready to have a conversation, a buying conversation. So then they, the, the people who are ready for the buying conversation, those are what's known as SQL, sales qualified leads, and we like those. But you're right, everyone who responds to you on LinkedIn, comments on your stuff, um, is absolutely not a sales qualified lead. They're not uh, a, a necessarily a buyer, a potential mm. buyer. So yeah. a lead is really, the way I talk about it is, there's just leads who are engaging with you on your socials. Yeah. There's high quality leads who are people who um, are maybe your buyer personas who are engaging on your socials. And then there's sales qualified leads, which are um, you know, qualified leads engaging on your socials who are ready to have a conversation with you and yeah. buy stuff. <laughs> Okay. And then the other thing is um, follow up. You know, yeah. um, that was another thing where uh, uh, for me, it was like, okay, you know, I've, uh, I've replied, the ball is in their court. Now yeah. I'm going to wait until they respond. Uh, if they don't respond, that means there is no interest whatsoever. And that was a huge mistake. Uh, I realized. Right. But what do you have to say about that? Yeah, no, agree with you. Um, and I'm, I'm so guilty of that because I'm much more a marketer than a salesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, just I'm more comfortable in that role. So I'm, I'm with you, like spew it out and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. um, but that actually doesn't work very well if you're trying to grow your business. And mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, my friend Andrea Waltz wrote the book, uh, Go for No. And so you are, you're go, you're, you're, sh you're I don't want to say pestering people, you're staying in touch with people until you get the no and the hard no, right? So mm -hmm. once is not enough. And they say something like, what is it? It's, I've, I've heard the number seven and I've heard the number 12, but mm -hmm. it's somewhere between seven. People have to see you, see your content um, seven to 12 times before they'll trust you enough to engage with you, which is why sometimes, you know, it takes 18 months of yeah. them seeing your stuff yeah. <laughs> for them to go, oh, okay, now I'm ready to reach out and buy. So once is not enough. Just it's inviting someone to connect is not enough. Um, the fact is there's too much noise. And even if you are like the perfect solution to their biggest problem, if they're not thinking about their biggest problem at the second that you send them that, them that invitation, it's not going to matter, especially mm -hmm. if they don't know who you are. Yeah. Um, so it's, you, you have to be persistent and consistent. And that's why, you know, when, when we have six phases actually to be, to, to successful selling. The first is the mindset we, we talked about. The second is the branding, which we talked about. The third is the um, engagement before connecting number four. The fifth is making sure you're sharing content all the time to stay in top, uh, top of mind with your buyer. And then number six, wait, I can, number six is, is the cadence mm -hmm. doing yeah, it yeah. regularly, doing it consistently a little bit every day. And that's what makes a huge difference. That's, that's a difference between people who are successful and not is, yeah. is the cadence. Cool. Awesome. Um, and, uh, uh, I think we are almost out of time, but <laughs> Can you share anonymously, of course, what kind of results uh, can you get uh, for if, you, if, you, if you follow this plan yeah. or if you utilize LinkedIn properly, what kind of uh, results have you seen people achieve? Yeah. Um, so I've got like, I've got corporate responses and, and individual responses. One of them I'm really excited about. We, um, I, I, I think I can share their name. Uh, it's actually B2C. We're very much a B2B based company and we train B2B sellers, but this was a B2C company, Tom James, which is a boutique clothier. They, they create and um, handcrafted suits 
yeah. for individual. They're so very nice, mm -hmm. but um, a little bit out of my price league. But I'm but but I'm gonna I'm gonna be buying some because it's just it's it's an amazing company. But anyway, we we ran um, I think forty of their sellers through our program, and some of the people you know just like dove right in and they did everything that they were supposed to. And some of them were like, eh, they're making me do this. Mm -hmm. So the folks who were, were successful, obviously were the ones who dove in. Um, we had, we, we awarded three awards on our, we do award ceremonies at the end mm -hmm. of our program. Mm -hmm. And um, three of them had more than doubled their, their expected quota because of what they did on the program. We had people who were, you know, an, an ex, an old client had viewed their profile and they had seen that and responded back and it had sparked like $7,500 worth of sales, wow. which for B to C is, is pretty significant for suits yeah, is yeah. pretty significant. Right. Yeah. Um, the, I think our biggest seller did a half million dollars. Wow right? Because of our program and that's B2C and that's a unit price of around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. That's, yeah. that's really impressive. Yeah. Um, we were just before this call, actually I was on a company call. Um, and what we're seeing on average is um, the conversation rates, the ability, our, our, our little tagline is we help you create qualified conversations with your connections. Nice. And so we were seeing an increase of 300% of people having qualified conversations with their connections after taking our program. Um, you know, there's, uh, I, I can, I can give you all kinds of stats. I can just pull up that, that, that little uh, report that we were looking at, yeah. but yeah, the people who actually take action. And even if you just do what I say today, yeah. um, you, I can guarantee you, you'll have more, more conversations. Now we're not a sales training company, so I can't, if you suck at selling, I can't promise that you can close, but mm -hmm. at least if you, if you start taking action and, and follow some of the strategies that I shared, I guarantee you, you'll have more conversations with, yeah. with your prospect. Uh, I can, I can attest to that. Yeah. It's powerful. Um, I, I just, uh, I'm just amazed at, at the power of, uh, you know, these platforms and what they can do. Uh, so what you have said, yeah, I mean, it, it is totally applicable. And if people uh, really apply the, this uh, strategy that you just mentioned, uh, yeah, I mean, the results are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just um, now I'm obviously, you know, Vivek of the LinkedIn expert who does LinkedIn, but my one of my best friends is Sue Zimmerman. She's the Instagram expert. Wow. And um, I can't I can't pull the numbers out of my head. I know they were really high, but she's amazing. She privately messages like pretty much anyone who engages on her posts mm -hmm. on, on, um, on Instagram. So if you engage on her post, she will private message you mm -hmm. her conversion rate. Like, so it goes from a private message to they book a 15 minute phone call with her, which usually only lasts about 10 minutes. Cause she's a, even a faster talker than I am. Mm -hmm. And, um, she usually sells them into either her $97 program or her, you know, $2,000 hives or her master program, which is, somewhere between five and $15,000. Mm -hmm. But that's just because she's consistent and she's personalizing those, the, those conversations for people who, who, who comment on her content. So it works on all platforms, not just LinkedIn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that is another uh, realization that came to me is that, you know, when I realize what a lead is, uh, yeah. it's a, uh, uh, again, you know, I, it, it's totally ridiculous to for me to, th you know, I and and I realize a lot of people think this way. They think when they talk about leads, uh, you know, it's a, it's something different on LinkedIn. It's something different on Facebook. Yeah. Something, but when I sort of broke it down, I realized all we are talking about is humans. You know, there's a yes. human, there's a human behind this platform. There's a human behind this platform. So you're having a conversation, and these platforms are a way to start the conversation. Uh, yeah. So if you look at it from that point of view, you know, things become easier because then you don't have to worry about, oh, you know, this is Instagram, this is LinkedIn. Right. As long as you're talking to humans and, and you, you keep that consistency of how you communicate, then, then it's, it's okay, right? Yeah, that absolutely. You know, it's funny in, in, in the podcast that I did earlier, they asked, what's your biggest pet peeve? Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh my God, automation. You know, automation, email automation, messaging automation on, on LinkedIn and LinkedIn, by the way, that'll get you, that'll get your, your profile restricted. If LinkedIn thinks you're, you're automating your messaging, 
So I, I just, it's like, be human. Mm -hmm. You might reach less people being human, but you're going to have a better, it's quality over quantity on LinkedIn. It really, really is. Yeah, that's so true. All right. Well, um, before I let you go, can you quickly tell us about your program, how people can reach out and uh, how can they take advantage of uh, your services? Sure, sure. So um, obviously our website, fengresso.com, 1S. We've got a couple of different programs that entrepreneurs can access. If you only need your profile, like you, you, you've written your profile 14 times, you read our ebook and it's still, you still, it still hasn't clicked for you. We do have profile writing services so we can actually help you write your profile. Um, that's one thing we do. We also have a selling with LinkedIn program that goes through the six phases that I discussed. So obviously, uh, Obviously, more <laughs> it's about nine hours of content, not 45 minutes worth, but um, it will take you through step by step each of those six stages that I mentioned mindset, branding, engaging, connecting, um, feeding with content and cadence, and, and help you to sell better and market better too on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'm Vivica at Bengresso.com. Um, I'm pretty easy to find on LinkedIn. Uh, so yeah, please feel uh, free to reach out. Let me know um, that you heard me on this podcast and, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Well, great. Thank you so much for being with us today and, uh, and sharing uh, uh, all the, your experience and wisdom about LinkedIn. Thank you so much. My absolute pleasure. Thank you. And that's all for now. Until next time. Now, if you're an entrepreneur or a career professional, then I invite you to join our growing community. Navigate to bootstrapping.group. As a welcome bonus, you will get the Startup Founders Technology Accelerator video series and Mastering Your Inner Game video series absolutely free. This series of short videos address some core issues which are instrumental in helping you move forward in your business or career. The videos are yours to view and share for free. No obligations or strings attached, except for one, you have to take action and implement it. So join us today, navigate to bootstrapping.group. If you want more engaging videos and insightful interviews with industry's thought leaders, then check out the other videos we have picked for you. The link is right there. And if you want to be notified about our new content, please do consider subscribing to our channel.